Most materials can be divided into conductors and insulators. Conductors, like this metal can, have three electrons, which are able to move freely throughout its structure. Insulators, like this rubber rod, do not have any free electrons, since all their electrons are locked in place around their atoms. This means that if I charge an insulator by adding electrons using friction and my possum fur, then those extra electrons will stay put on the end of the rubber rod, giving it a negative charge. For the metal can, things are different. Metals have free electrons which can move freely throughout its structure. In fact, each metal atom donates approximately one electron to a sea of free electrons. This means that we can move some of these free electrons around using another charged object. So if I bring my negatively charged rubber rod close to the metal can, then some of the free electrons closest to the rubber rod will be repelled to the other side because light charges repel. This means that the side of the can closest to the rod will have less electrons than before, making it positively charged, while the side farthest away from the rubber rod will have more electrons than before, making it negatively charged. Remember, the can was initially uncharged. We have just moved some of the electrons around using the charged rubber rod. Since the positive side of the can is closest to the negatively charged rod, there will be a net force of attraction between the negatively charged rod and the can because unlike charges attract. So each time I move the rod to one side of the can, the free electrons are repelled to the other side, making the side closest to the rod positively charged. Drink cans are also conductors, and because they have a smaller mass, they will accelerate faster. I can also charge myself up negatively using the Van de Graaff generator. And then I can also move the free electrons around using my hand. Now usually air is a really good insulator. But like all insulators, if we put enough voltage across it, it will break down and start conducting electricity. Now for air, that happens to be 30,000 volts for every centimeter of air we want to break down. So in our spheres here, we've got a four centimeter air gap, which means we need 120,000 volts to break it down. Now solid insulators, like this piece of wood here, break down in a very different way. They break down slowly and they break down in stages. Which is exactly what happens when an underground power cable fails slowly over many years.